It's true, dashboards summarize and visually represent data, but without meaning behind the data, what dashboards present could be considered useless. A person's weight, for example, is just a number until we know it's their weight. And if we don't know whether the number is in kilograms or pounds, it's also kind of nebulous. The number is also irrelevant unless we know how tall they are. For example, a person who is five foot two and weighs 137 pounds is gonna be a little bit different than a person who's six foot two and weighs the same. In addition, we need to know if they're trying to maintain, lose, or gain weight to give some relevance to it. In order to be truly successful, organizations and individuals need to have targets as well. These could be defined as things that our organization or our doctor tells us. But if we're following a hobby or activity, then there are maybe league or industry or societal standards. And of course, we all have personal targets and goals as well. The dashboard can then take the actual data and compare it against the targets to provide insight on how well those targets are being met. Depending on what the dashboard displays, people then can take appropriate action. Actions are often at the individual level, but for organizations, they might require organizational level change, like an entire business, an entire sports team, or an entire family. For optimal results, actions as a whole need to address overall targets. If they only address discrete levels, then other variables and opportunities and challenges that feed into the success as a whole may be overlooked. As a manager, I may be interested in my team's hours, the hours that they've worked this week, but also how it relates to the overall profitability of the company. As a person, I want to track how much I'm exercising, but also how that relates to weight and the mood as part of my holistic health. It's the big picture as well as discrete elements that are important to track and to understand. This is where our good old friend KPIs come into play. The key performance indicator is one of a set of measures that indicates the performance of something that is considered to be essential. If a KPI falls out of what has been deemed a normal range, it indicates the need for some type of intervention in order to remedy it. If you're familiar with project management theory, KPIs are similar to critical tasks. If anything about the start or end date of a critical task changes in a project, it changes the end date for the entire project, not just for that particular task. Likewise, KPIs measure some type of performance that if not met, will somehow affect the ultimate output, production, or success of an entire company, not just a department or a specific location, or for a person's particular goals. The full breadth of discussion about KPIs is best left for other venues because it is a long topic. You can take many courses in it that take weeks and months, but suffice it to know that as the creator of a dashboard, we must be aware of the KPIs so we can incorporate them into our display. One way to make KPIs and other data more useful is to consider what exactly it is we're trying to know or show about them. For example, it's easy for most businesses to talk about expenses or revenue, but what exactly is it that we want to know? There are all kinds of things we can show for either one of these. Do we need to know expenses for a specific category like training or utilities? Or do we need to know if the cumulative expenses have been trending upward or downward over time? If we're tracking our diet, do we want to know calories per day or what percentage of the calories in each day are from fats, proteins, and carbohydrates? This is ultimately going to help us identify how we want to display the data as a visual element on our dashboard. Just as important as the KPIs and other measurements that we need to include are the ones that we definitely should not include. We don't want any extraneous data in our dashboards. If it doesn't directly map to the purpose and audience of the dashboard, leave it out. Do we care if the company collected $140 in parking lot violation fines last year? Or do we care that our last blood level of potassium was high or low? Maybe, maybe not. Dashboards need to be concise, and it's not the place to add things just because they look nice or you think that they're interesting. They need to be relevant to the audience and the purpose. Once the audience and purpose and specific information that needs to be displayed has been identified, it's then time to ensure the data required to generate it for our output is available. We mentioned earlier how dashboard designers, that would be you by the way, need to know their data. Although it's helpful, that doesn't necessarily mean understanding all of the nuances of the business or industry and its metrics, but it does mean some basic knowledge regarding the physical aspects of the data. What is the raw data source? Does it need to be imported or linked into Excel? How and at what frequency will the data be updated? Will those updates occur automatically? or will they require some type of administrative or user intervention? Is it a straightforward or a convoluted process to update the data? 
Do we as designers know how to access the data? And do we have permissions to do so? That may be organizational permissions, as well as things for the specific file or system we need to access. Now, once we have the data, the next question is, how will we organize it into worksheets to provide the output we need for our dashboard display? One thing to consider is that a single dashboard may not be perfect for all users of the dashboards. Often, companies will attempt to create an all-in-one solution. Even if people use overlapping data, the way they need to manipulate and interpret that data may be very different. In that case, it's important to look at each user group and what their business need is, and then design one or more dashboards to accommodate it. I think it's important to start small and focus on a few key areas based on the objective and audience for the initial single dashboard, especially for the first ones we attempt. As people buy into its use and you get feedback that provides additional insights into possible improvements, then the dashboard can be modified and grow over time and maybe even additional dashboards created. Several dashboards can be created from the initial data. The next thing to consider, though, is to plan how the data will actually be organized on the physical dashboard itself. That's going to define how we're going to organize and aggregate it in the underlying worksheets. In other words, how we eventually want to present it will determine the raw data we need and what Excel tools and calculations we can use to get it that way. As we'll see in the chapter on preparing the data, there are some guidelines and tips for doing so when it comes to structuring and organizing worksheets for dashboards that are a little bit different than just standard data analysis worksheets. It's also important to remember that the more complex the underlying data, meaning if the data has to come from multiple sources and to be aggregated or calculated several times, then the more difficult it will become to modify the dashboard components themselves once it has been created. That's why it's important, dare I say critical, to consider categories of data, often called dimensions. It's helpful to think about categories such as regions, markets, departments or divisions, maybe leagues or teams, or even calories, fat, and carbohydrates, when we first begin planning the dashboard requirements. Here's a hint, it's easy to identify potential categories because they often are the columns in the data. This is actually part of the work we need to work towards at the end of our dashboard development process as well. That's when we decide what type of interactivity we want to have, and interactive elements are often based on these categories. It's important to know that information might be viewed by region or league early on, so that we can organize the data correctly to begin with in the underlying data sheets. It's also important when we start creating interactive elements that will allow users to sort or filter information that way as well. If we do not clearly understand how the dashboard will be used until that point in the process, I guarantee we will experience a lot of frustration and having to go back and potentially rebuild a large part of the work we already completed. The actual measures, metrics, and KPIs you use will depend not only on the nature of your business, but also the purpose of the dashboard and the audience it is intended to serve. There's a myriad of ways to analyze data using Excel, far beyond the 260 or so built-in functions it contains. A little research, planning, a solid understanding of the data, and the business case or purpose for the dashboard are critical elements in the dashboard and the designer's ultimate success.